family um, this is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it I am Pastor Tremaine Vincent and I am sitting here with the wonderful Charles Owens associate minister at friendship good deal we are bringing you Bible study night we're studying the book called I am a church member I am a church member by Tom Rainer um, last Wednesday night we had a phenomenal Bible study Amen. Uh, we talked about I will be a functioning church member. Did you enjoy that lesson? Last I week? really enjoyed studying about functioning church member. Yes. We, Learning how to do it. Yes. How to be one. Yes. <laughs> yes. We talked about that uh, every member plays a part Absolutely. in the ministry. Is, is that important, you think, uh, Dr. Owens, how everyone plays a part in the ministry? That is very important. If you're going to have a functioning, growing church, mm -hmm. we must have a functioning organization. Yes, yes. Organism yes. living yes. for the Lord. Amen. 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 And we, we talked about how the pastor has his part, the ministers have their part, the deacons have their role, um, the trustees have their role, uh, the parking lot greeters have their role. If you're going to have a fully functioning church, if you're going to be a good church member, you need to know that you play a major role in the body of Christ. In the body. In the body. Everybody has a place, a part to play. Yes, sir. Everybody. Everybody. From the youngest to the oldest. Yes. So, we so, all have that role. So you mean to tell me, Dr. Owens, I can't just join the church and just sit on the bench and don't get in the game? You can, but I encourage you not to. <laughs> Get in the game. Get in the game. If you're going to play the game, in the, uh, play the part, you need to be in the game. In the game. Part of the team. Part of the team. And, of the and team. that's the part the Bible was teaching us that Tom Rainer mentioned um, that, that, that so often we think that we're just on the team just to be on the team. 
But if you're going to be a functioning church member, as we yeah. learned in the book, I am a church member, you need to get in the game. You need to Absolutely. play your part. Absolutely. Because somebody needs what you do in order for them to be a blessing in their life. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the concept of team, um, if you plan to win. Yes, yes. If you're planning to win, mm. I don't care if it's on a basketball team, football team, or <laughs> robotic. Yeah. <laughs> you need to be on the team and play your part. Yes, yes. Everybody has a special part. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. You need to be ready to play that part and get it done. Get it done. Amen. And then what I love about it is do your part and let other people do their part. Amen. 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 So often yes. in the body of Christ or in church ministries, um, one person or a few people are trying to do everybody's part. Oh, yes. But we learned here at Friendship last Wednesday night that, hey, you, you just focus on your part and let God help the other people with their part. Absolutely. Hey. And that's why the body of, the, of Christ is so important because you get, the eyes got one job. Yeah, the eyes the got nose one. got another job. <laughs> Right. Mouth got another job. So you mean to tell got me another the job. eyes can't be the mouth? Oh, no. And the oh, mouth no. can't be the nose? No, no. You got two eyes and one mouth. That's it. Oh, you mean to see more <laughs> before you speak. Oh, that's good. That's good. Y'all put that in the comments. You need to see more before you speak. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, but I am supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, happy about the lesson we have tonight. We're absolutely. talking about I will be a unified. Unified church member yeah, absolutely man we could spend uh the rest of the year in talking about the importance of being a unified church member i believe tom, tom rayner in this por portion of in chapter two of talking about being a unifying church member yeah, absolutely. he was saying that all of us have a role in making sure we don't call confusion nah, in the church absolutely not yeah. and yeah. and how important is that that so often Confusion is in the church, and, and it's brought on because we're not being unifying church members. Absolutely, absolutely. When we're not a unifying church church member, we find ourselves with a tendency mm. to look at what somebody else is doing. Oh, that's good. And not what God wants us to do. Oh, man. So we have to keep our eyes on the prize. Yes, yes. Keep our eyes on Jesus I, Christ. I think that, that summed up in an old school song the William Brothers had. It says, so, sweep around your own. your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. Yes. Put that in the comments. Say, sweep around your own front door. Uh, meaning focus on what God has placed in your spirit. Focus on the ministry that is before you. If you're going to be a unified church member, Tom Rayner begins this chapter by saying, God desires for Christians to get along. Absolutely. Absolutely. How, how important is it for us who are in the body of Christ to get along with each other? It is very important. And it's all cent it's centered around uh, love. Love. Oh. Jesus left us with the key word, uh, mm -hmm. unifying commandment, mm -hmm. a new commandment that I give you, mm -hmm. that you love one another. Love one another. As I have loved you. Yes. Uh, that you love one another. Oh, that's good. Yes. Here's the secret. Mm -hmm. By this, mm -hmm. all men will know yeah. that you, you are, are my, my disciples. disciples. Oh, Amen. Man. So watch this. You know, you, you can identify that you are a disciple of Christ, not by how big your house is, oh, no. not by how big your 401k is, not how big your bank account is, not based on the cars that are sitting in your driveway, but you know you are a disciple of Christ by how you love, love. Ye one another. Absolutely, oh. absolutely. What kind of church could we build? What kind of church ministry could we have if all the members of the church learn how to operate in, in love. love. Yes, sir. Awesome. 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 Love went to the cross. Oh, man, that's good. Love saved us. Oh, love. Love is keeping us. Love. Love is protecting us. Love. Providing for us. Love. Only love. Only love. Only love can do it. Uh, John three sixteen. for God so loved love the world. That he gave his only begotten. It's all, it's all about love. 
And listen, if you're going to be the church member friendship, for those that are, that are not members of friendship, if you want to be a good member at your church, learn how to love. Watch this, Dr. Owen. Yes, sir. Do I just get to love the people that love me back? Oh, no. Oh, man. Oh, help, man. help me with that. If, I, if that's what you're planning to do, love someone that love you back, then you're not done with God, did. Oh, that's good. That's God good. sent his son. Mm-hmm. In the atmosphere of love. Love, love. He sent his son because he loved us so much. Yes. You know what? We don't even love him back. Mm. But he still loves us in spite of us. Yes. He yes. still loves us in spite of us. I, I think that's the true message of the cross. That's the message of who are we who are believers is we have to learn how to love those that don't look like us. Love those that Absolutely. don't act like us. Y'all better talk back to me in the comments. All right. Love those that don't sing like us. Maybe love those that's a different political affiliation. God did not tell us to pick love only people that's our skin color, our political oh, affiliation, no. or those that we like. God is teaching us that we should love everybody. Everybody. Every, everybody. If you want to know whether you are being a good church member or not, you should judge it by your by your love meter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh. God so loved us, like you said, he gave everything that he had. Mm -hmm. Just to let us know that he loved us so. Yes. And the message behind what he did, what the God the Father did, what God the Son did, it's the message to us. Yes. We got to do the same thing for our fellow friendshipians. Yes. And Amen. for our community. Amen. Our city, our country. That's it. And for one another. That's regardless it. of what you look like. Oh, that's good. Yep. Only God can do that. Do you hear that? It's not just about, if you're being a good church member, you're loving your community. Absolutely. You're loving your city, loving those in your city. Why? Because love, when the church start love, loving, that leads to Tom Rainer's point as well, that unity comes in the house. Unity. How can two walk together? Except. Except they agree. <laughs> Absolutely. That you must walk together in love. How much stronger could our churches be? How oh, much man. stronger could friendship be? How much stronger could your ministry be, your church be, if we all love each other, Absolutely. walk together in unity? And in love. Oh, oh, yes. Man. Oh, what, yes. What if the choir is on one accord? How much more powerful can the worship service Absolutely. be? Absolutely. Nancy Pelosi said these words. Diversity is our strength. Yeah. Regardless of what we look like out here. Oh, man. Diversity is but our strength. But she said strength. unity yeah. is our power. Oh, that's good. Diversity unity is, is our strength. Is our strength. Unity, Unity is our power. power. Amen. Oh. So we get that power. Mm. Can you imagine what we can do? Wow. What this church could do, what our community could do, mm. if we get that kind of love. So, so you're, you're really suggesting that our power is not wrapped up in our, in our individual ability. Oh, no. But our power as a ministry is connected to our ability to work together. Absolutely. Oh, man. How Absolutely. powerful that how is. How powerful, how powerful. And, you know, I hate to bring in secular perspective from time to time, but sometimes we have to. Bring it in. <laughs> we have to bring it in. <laughs> if we're going to be practical about things that's happening in life and in our church, yes. we have to bring stuff in that can help us. Yes. Yes, yes, That can yes. help us. Help. Amen, amen. And, and that's what we've been preaching and teaching. That's what we're learning from, from I Am A Church Member by Tom Rainer is if we're going to be a unifying church member, we got to operate in love. Absolutely. And we have to realize I need you. And you need me. And you need me. <laughs> no one person can do it by themselves. I think I mentioned last amen. week in Bible study that, hey, the success of this church is not just based upon your past. Oh no, oh no, the all of us. Yeah, everyone has a role to play. Absolutely. Everyone has a part to play. Tom Rainer um, hit so many points in this, but he was telling us that gossip and other negative talk oh, yeah. is not needed It's not needed in the church. No. Oh man. And it shouldn't be tolerated in the church. Oh, that's good, that's good. You don't want to tolerate it at your home. No. <laughs> 
Man, we, we could have dropped the mic. We don't have mics in our hands, but we could have walked off stage with that point. At, what would happen to your church Amen. if all the gossip left your church? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. What, what would happen in your ministry if there was no negative talk about our sisters and brothers? I believe I, I preached a few Sundays, the last Sunday of the Sunday for last, and I told all the members of our church in friendship, I said, do not talk negative about your church members. Please do not. Mm. Because what you say against one another, don't you know the people in the, in the, in the community are going to hear exactly what you're saying? Oh, so why man. would they come to your church? Oh, y'all heard that. <laughs> oh, If you're talking about your own church, <laughs> why do you want to come? Oh. Somebody else come. Amen. So, so that point really highlights the fact that we can be losing members which ultimately lose souls to Christ Absolutely. by being divided. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the importance of the importance of understanding that if I operate in love and being a good church member, I will not gossip about my church. Will not do it. I will not gossip about my deacons. I will not gossip about my ministerial team. I will not gossip about my choir. If someone asks me about how the church is doing, oh, we are blessed in the highly faith. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. How, how is friendship doing? God is blessing us beyond measure. He is blessing us beyond measure. Yeah. So if you spread more positive than negative, you, that, that allows more unity to be in the house. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You give the community an opportunity to see a church that's trying to do what God desired for them it to do. Mm -hmm. You see a church that is growing and glowing. Yes. I Amen. like that. Amen. Growing and glowing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's what's starting to happen at Friendship. You feel the excitement in the air. Yeah, absolutely. You feel the shifting in the air. And it doesn't happen, I, I believe I mentioned this, growing churches to what God want them to be don't happen on stages. Oh, no. But it happens in the pew when you love me and I love you. You walk in unity with me and I walk in unity with you. Because listen... I want to be a good church member. Absolutely. And in order for me to be a good church member, I have to love and I have to walk in unity with my brothers and my sisters. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then Tom Rainer talks about forgiveness and unity. I believe the first line um, verse on, on page 26, Tom Rainer said, it was one of those experiences that seemed to come out of left field. I was a young man in the business world, and my wife had joined a church that we loved. We loved the pastor and his preaching. We loved the fellowship. We loved the ministries of the church. My pastor mentioned in one of his sermons that he would be willing to meet with the men on Tuesday at 5 a.m. to All pray. Right. He said he wasn't looking for a crowd, just a few men that wanted to make the commitment. I jumped at the opportunity, and, and it's, the story goes on to say we began our prayer time with words that were spoken out, out loud. We were talking, taking time to talk to God before we verbalized our All prayers right. for others to hear. But every time I've tried to pray, my mind went back to my high school years. Every time the teacher's face would appear in my mind's eye, it was so strange that I couldn't pray. All right. You see, the teacher had physically abused me and had kept the secret and told no one. How many of us are dealing with unforgiveness in our heart. Amen. And this unforgiveness is impacting our ability to love and walk in unity. You know, um, Pastor, uh, the church members will not be a church, a unifying church until we develop an attitude forgiveness oh that's good that's good that's good we're not we cannot be a unifying church until we develop an attitude of our forgiveness mm. forgiveness covers a multitude of faults yes yes christ forgave us yes he did and why can't we forgive each other oh man that that's so powerful oh, uh, yeah. i think in a few sundays we're about to start a series at our church called Reset. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about resetting our mind, resetting our heart. Yes, when sir. we deal with resetting our heart, 
we're going to deal with forgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot be a unifying church member if you don't deal with the unforgiveness in your heart. Amen. I believe Tom Rainer mentions in this story that I just read that the moment that someone was, was able to forgive, then that release, it was a liberating factor for the person oh, yes. that forgave. Oh, yes. oh how, yes. How important do you think, Dr. Owens, it is for we who are, are believers who may have been hurt in the church. Amen. I think we call, some of us call that church hurt. Amen. How liberating is it for us to forgive our brothers and sisters? It frees us. Mm. It frees us from the guilt, from mm -hmm. the pain, from the anger. Yeah. And the hurt. Mm -hmm. Because if we're carrying these things with us day to day, yes. it's going to impact how we're going to react oh, to others. How we deal with each how other. How we deal with each other. Mm -hmm. It is going to impact it. And so it is ultimately important. Yes. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. That we learn to forgive. Absolutely. How, how much more better could your worship be if you forgive the person that's sitting two rows down from you? Amen. How much Amen. more better could your serving be if you don't mind serving with someone that did you wrong five years ago. Absolutely. How much Absolutely. more better could your service to God be if you learn to forgive? Now, I must be honest, it's not easy to forgive. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's not easy to let it go. It's not easy to move on. But the Bible is teaching us through the, through the man of Tom Rainer in this book, I Am a Church Member, that when you forgive, it gives you a liberation to your own yeah, spirit. Absolutely. It, it releases us, man. It releases us. And we must do this. If we're going to be true followers of Jesus of Christ, yeah. we must follow what he practiced and we, what he instructed us to do. Yes, yes. Told us to do. Yes, sir. And we have to forgive it just like he forgave others. Yeah. Tom Rainer mentions in his book that unity in the church will not happen if members have unforgiving heart. Will not happen. So unforgiveness in our heart, it could be holding the whole church back. Mm. Yeah, and, and forgiveness holds us together as yeah. well. Yeah, oh, Amen. that's good. Amen. Unforgiveness se separates yeah, absolutely. us. Absolutely. But forgiveness holds us together. Pulls oh, right that's together. a good point. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, as we close, do you have any closing points, Dr. Owens, when we're talking about unifying the church, when we talk about a unifying church member? Because what we're talking about in this book, I Am Church Member, we don't want to just be any kind of church member. Oh, no. We want to oh, be no. a church member according to how the Bible instructs. Do you hey, have any, hey, any, any points you want to mention before we close? According to Raina, Raina uh, unity is critical to the church. Unity is important to the church, mm -hmm. but just as important, unity is critical to the church as and, and important yes. to the church. So when we focus on dealing with the gossip, gossip mm -hmm. God wants us to look at how he would handle situations. Oh yeah, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Yeah, yeah. We wear the band on our arm. Yeah. What would Jesus do? Yeah. But put it in your heart. Put it in your heart. Oh, I like that. <laughs> put it in your heart. Yes. yes. How he would handle it. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is so important. Yes, sir. It is critical to the unity of the church because if we stop forgiving those that hurt us, half of the church will be gone. Yes. Yes. Somebody's hurt you somewhere along the way yes. in, your, in the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. But God wants us to forgive. Forget and keep moving. Forgive and Amen. keep moving. Amen. If you want to be what God is calling you to be as we close, uh, Friendship and all those that are watching us online, if you want to be the church member how God wants you to be, you have to learn that you, you have to forgive. Amen. You have to walk in unity. And you have to love your brothers and sisters. Absolutely. Am I a unifying church member? This is a personal question. It's personal. You have to examine yourself. What did I say? What did I not say? What did I not do? Who did I not speak to? All of us have to examine ourselves. 
and ask ourselves, how can I be a better church member? Amen. I believe Tom Rainer's second pledge, he asked us to say this. I am a church member. I am. I will seek to be a source of unity in my church. I know there are no perfect pastors, staff, or other church members, but neither am I. I will not be a source of gospel. Oh, no. One of the greatest contributions I can make is to do all I can in God's power to help keep the church in unity for the sake of the gospel. Amen. Come on, I need all friendship to sign and date that because uh, I believe that we are building a unifying church, Absolutely. unifying people. Hey, thank y'all for tuning in tonight. I hope, I pray it was an amazing Bible study. Did you enjoy it tonight? Enjoyed it, enjoyed it. Good deal. Hey, we're going to be back at the same time next week, preaching and teaching the word of God. We're in the book, I Am a Church Member by Tom Rainer. Make sure you get all of your church members, your sister, your brothers, your friends. Um, tell them to tune in. Not just not people just member of our church, Absolutely. but we believe this can be a blessing to every church. Absolutely. I am a church member. I am, I am Pastor member. Tremaine Benson, and I pastor Friendship in the great city of Mobile, Amen. Alabama. And, and I am Dr. here Charles with my brother, Owens. Dr. Charles Owens. I'm grateful that y'all tune in tonight. Stay tuned. More to come. Take care. Amen.